Hello, Sam. Next slide, Sam. All right, and thank you for using the chat. We're getting uh, quite a few people, some names that are very familiar to us, and then a couple of uh, new people. So thank you, welcome. Good evening to everybody. Great to see you come out. We'll be holding these meetings in Bodega Bay, but due to COVID restrictions, this is the safest way for us to provide you with these project, uh, project details. Um, on this slide, I'd like to focus on some meeting housekeeping. Um, everyone is being muted right now. Uh, following our pre-recorded presentation, we're going to open up for Q&A. Uh, we're going to take questions in the order that they are received. You have two ways of, of uh, posing a question. You can either enter it into the uh, chat box, or you can also ask those questions live. We're also going to be taking questions from the telephone line. And then time permitting, we're going to get into some of the questions that have been previously received. We've been getting a lot of great questions. All of the Q&A is going to be on the website after, this, uh, after tonight's presentation, and you can see a link to the uh, website there at the bottom of your screen. On the left-hand side of the uh, screen, I'd like to draw your attention to tonight's meeting agenda. Uh, we're going to open with a couple welcome remarks. We have a few special guests who will be providing an introduction. We're very excited uh, for you to hear from them. Um, I mentioned we're going to have a pre-recorded presentation and then we're going to leave as much time as we possibly can uh, to have as much Q&A. Um, All right, we've got a, a lot of people. This is great. Um, thank you if uh, you just entered from the waiting room. Um, please find a chat box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Introduce yourselves. Let us know how you heard about tonight's meeting. Uh, we're just about to get started um, with some of our uh, special speakers. Uh, we will be welcoming you to tonight's meeting. Uh, next slide, please. And one more slide. Uh, with us tonight, we have Tony Tavares, who has been the Caltrans District 4 Director for nearly three years. You may remember Tony from last year's Highway 1 Emergency Repair Town Hall meetings. Tony worked very closely with the Gleason Beach Project team since arriving, and he has also forged a collaborative working relationship with Supervisor Hopkins and the Senator's office. Tony will be introducing these, your representatives, in just a few minutes. Uh, Supervisor Hopkins currently represents this part of coastal Sonoma County. She has been actively involved in this project since taking office, and her staff has also been equally involved in this project, uh, working very closely with Caltrans for the past several years. And lastly, from Senator McGuire's office, we are pleased to have Rebecca Washman, Chief of Staff to the Senator. The Senator's office has worked closely with Caltrans to advance regional projects that would benefit his constituents, including tonight's projects. And now I'd like to turn it over to Tony to welcome you and to introduce you to your representatives. Tony. Well, hello. Thank you, Erica. Well, hello and good evening, everyone. I am Tony Tavares. I'm the Caltrans Bay Area Director, and it is a great honor to be here to be able to present to you the Gleason Beach Project along Highway 1 in Sonoma County. I've been involved in this project since, the, since returning to the Bay Area almost three years ago now, and I've attended many meetings and discussed the project in length with many stakeholders, county officials, and elected leaders. Uh, Sonoma County's coastline is one of the most beautiful and pristine places on the earth, and I've been there several times and I can attest to that personally. One of our highest priorities in this project is to protect that beauty and the environment while also ensuring that Highway 1 is protected from coastal erosion. Tonight, my team will be able to present the scope of the project and how we intend to protect the environment and Highway 1 for today and for future generations. The proposed project will enable us to uncover the western end of Scotty Creek, letting it flow naturally into the ocean once again. And Caltrans will also build a bridge over the nearby wetlands allowing water to ebb and flow unimpeded by the old Highway 1 roadbed. 
This will help reestablish local flora and fauna that once thrived in this area. Also, the new project offers upgraded access and enhanced safety features for pedestrians and bicyclists. I'm pleased that Caltrans has the chance to present this project to you this evening. And of course, this is an interactive meeting. We want to hear from all of you as well. After the presentation, my Caltrans team will be available to answer your questions, take your comments, and provide any additional information you might need. As mentioned, your feedback is extremely important to us. We wanna hear from you. We want this to be interactive and we appreciate the number of people and community members that are here with us this evening. Once again, thank you for attending this meeting for the Gleason Beach Project along Highway 1 in Sonoma County. And now I would like to introduce Sonoma County Supervisor Linda Hopkins. Supervisor Hopkins has been involved with this project for many years. She's educated me personally on the history of the project as well as the issues along Gleason Beach. She's been a wonderful advocate uh, for the community and the environment and a great partner to all of us along with the staff from the County of Sonoma in bringing this project to the point that it is today. Won't you help me welcome and it's a pleasure for me to introduce Supervisor Hopkins. Thank you so much, Director Tavares. I really appreciate it. Um, and this has truly been a multi-agency partnership and collaboration as we've moved forward with this process. Obviously, as the county representative, um, I am not the person who is designing or you know, constructing the infrastructure discussing today, nor are we actually the entity that is ultimately tasked with permitting it, which will happen with the Coastal Commission at a public uh, Coastal Commission hearing later this year. Um, but what we have been focused on is how can we actually leave the environment somewhat better than we found it um, as we're walking into this, pro this project. And so some of the things that we have worked really hard on at the county level and that we have received um, you know, warm reception from Caltrans as well as the Coastal Commission include that restoration of Scotty Creek. Also, the cleanup of the unmanaged retreat, um, as I presented to the Coastal Commission last Friday, where you know, this unmanaged retreat where we see sudden actions of houses falling into the sea um, without having any kind of control over it. So unfortunately, as we're all aware, anyone who drives by there can see the debris that's littering our cliffside, that's littering our beaches. Um, and, um, and part of this project will actually be cleaning some of that up. So we actually start to see a restoration of our beautiful coastal bluffs in this area. And then the third piece is really new access opportunities. Um, you know, as climate change occurs, as we see increased sea level rise, as well as coastal erosion, unfortunately, my kids are going to grow up with a very different coastline than what we see today. Um, and yet, we also have some opportunities that if we look at managed retreat, if we sort of focus on ecological answers to sea level rise, we can actually create new public spaces while they're available. And so part of this project also is creating a new public opportunity to access the coastal bluffs and a new park that will be managed by regional park um, as a result of this project. And so those are some of the things that I am really proud of, but I do not want to take credit for these. Although I have participated in a lot of meetings, I have got to say a huge thank you to Gary Helfrich, Cecily Condon, Vern, um, our county council, and then also all of the fantastic staff at the Coastal Commission, because I do believe that in many ways, this project can set the tone for how we address sea level rise throughout the state of California and how we can actually create new access opportunities and environmental restoration as part of these projects going forward. And um, so with that, I would hand it back to you, Director Tavares. Thank you very much, Supervisor Hopkins. And, and I totally agree with all the comments you just made. That I, I hope this project will be a model for other projects throughout the state as well. And with us this, this evening, I'd like to also welcome from State Senator Mike McGuire's office, uh, Rebecca Washburg, his chief of staff, to provide some comments from the Senator's office. Thank you so much. Um, Senator McGuire is so sorry that he couldn't be here tonight. He had an unavoidable conflict, but I um, just wanted to quickly say that this has been a really significant priority for Senator McGuire. And um, we've been working hand in hand with Caltrans and with the county um, to get the project moving and um, are really grateful that we're here tonight. Highway 1 is an incredibly vital resource, um, as Supervisor Hopkins was just saying, and for coastal residents. And we really appreciate um, the tremendous partnership that we've had moving forward and looking forward to the rest of the meeting. 
Thank you, Rebecca. And, and it is true what both you and the supervisor mentioned. This has been a wonderful partnership between many agencies, many organizations, and the community. And it couldn't have been a better partnership, and, and it's allowed us to get to the point where we are today. So I'm, I'm very pleased to, that our team has an opportunity to present this to the community and to uh, obtain your feedback and your comments. And, and as mentioned, hopefully make this a model for projects moving forward in the future. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Erica. Great, thank you, Director Tony. All right, I'd like to uh, go to the chat uh, function. I think we've been getting in a, a number of comments. Uh, we have a number of members of the public who are here with us tonight. So thank you everybody for, uh, for joining tonight. Um, a few of the comments that we've received here is, relate to closed captioning and if that will be available. Um, we do not have that tonight. This will be posted on the website and we'll make sure that the recording that is posted on the website also has closed captioning. So uh, thank you for those comments. And, um, and for those of you who are maybe a little bit new to Zoom, I know this, um, there, there are lots of different, um, different internet functions. If you look at your grid video view, you can actually have this to show more speakers or less speakers. So once the uh, presentation is recorded on the, uh, on the website, um, that of course has all of the, uh, the presenters. But right now for you, you can actually manipulate this view and, um, and have it show you know, more or fewer speakers. Um, this time, we're going to flip to the pre-recorded presentation. The audio will let us know if it'll be uh, loud enough, it should come over loud and clear. So get that, uh, that set up. And here's a great shot of everybody um, who's in the meeting. If you guys can uh, see everybody here, great to see so many uh, faces at tonight's meeting on uh, so many new faces. So thank you for using the chat function to introduce yourselves. Um, please, please keep, you know, keep the chat coming. Let us know how you heard about tonight's meeting. Um, let us know if this is your first meeting or your fifth meeting that you've been a part of. Uh, we, we, appreciate, uh, we appreciate the input. And now we'll get started with the pre-recorded presentation followed by live Q&A. Good evening. I'm Arnica McCarthy, Caltrans Environmental Branch Chief for Sonoma County. Welcome to tonight's Gleason Beach Roadway Realignment project community meeting. Due to COVID-19, this is the first virtual community meeting that we've hosted for this project, but definitely not the first community meeting. As many of you may know, we've hosted several over the years in Bodega Bay, and we appreciate you joining us tonight, whether it's your first meeting with us or your sixth. In this presentation, we will be providing you with an overview of the project and its long history, which may be new information for some of you in attendance tonight. We will also be talking about project constraints, which have shaped the final design of the project. We will take this opportunity to share some of the benefits, including public access and habitat enhancements that will be established as a result of this project. And lastly, we are lucky to have key members of our project development team on hand to answer any questions that you may have. As part of the project overview, we'll introduce you to the purpose and need, we'll describe where this project is located and begin to describe the unique challenges that this project presents. We'll provide an overview of the existing project history and timeline to discuss how we got to where we are and what comes next. The project purpose and need is what has guided the development of the Gleason Beach Roadway Realignment Project. It is to protect this segment of State Route 1 from continued coastal erosion, which I'll share later in this presentation is only projected to get worse, to provide a long-term alignment for the highway, and to maintain connectivity for residents who live in the area and for visitors coming from surrounding communities. This is a view of the project footprint. Starting at the southern end, just past Portuguese Beach, the project would veer east from the existing State Route 1 alignment and move inland away from the coast. The highway then spans Scotty Creek and associated floodplains and wetlands on an 850-foot long bridge, which was the best alternative, allowing Caltrans to minimize impacts to the floodplain and other sensitive resources. 
North of the bridge, the highway continues for approximately three quarters of a mile before meeting back with the existing alignment of State Route 1 at the northern project limit. After construction, portions of the existing alignment of State Route 1 will continue to provide access to residences along the ocean, while the culvert at Scotty Creek will be removed, opening up the mouth of the creek and restoring its natural flows. The inland bluff retreat is a result of natural coastal erosion. In less than 100 years, the coastline will look much different from today. This project addresses the need to provide a long-term solution to ensure safe, efficient access to the coast for residents and visitors. This slide shows the change in bluff retreat starting today with the existing alignment of State Route 1 and the projected location of the bluff at the end of the century. The new alignment of State Route 1 has been situated east of the projected 2100 bluff. This slide provides a snapshot of the highway conditions that residents and frequent visitors have experienced and which Caltrans has been working to fix since 2004. The emergency repairs, shown in black, are short-term solutions to a problem that we anticipate will only get worse. Emergency repairs to the existing highway are costly and unpredictable from a planning standpoint as to when the highway will be unsafe for the traveling public. The risk of such emergency situations is a total closure of the highway, which will cut off vital access to the communities who need it most. Caltrans initiated the Gleason Beach Roadway Realignment Project to provide a long-term solution to protect the integrity of State Route 1 related to bluff erosion. The dates shown in blue are key steps of this planning process. We'll talk more about the environmental impact report as we discuss the project process and constraints. This project has been in the works for over a decade now. Much of that time has been spent by the Caltrans project development team working to develop a project that meets the purpose and need described earlier and that avoids or minimizes impacts to protected resources. The project development team consists of project managers, environmental planners, biologists, engineers, landscape architects, hydraulic engineers, archaeologists, and other technical specialists. Within the environmental process, Caltrans has evaluated 20 different alternatives, selecting three final alternatives which were evaluated and are included in the environmental impact report, including alternatives 19A, 19B, and 20. After the public comment period, Caltrans selected 19A as the preferred alternative and least environmentally damaging and certified the final environmental document in 2016. Since then, the project development team has been coordinating with resource agencies and working to develop and refine the project design. Currently, construction is set to begin next summer and will last for three years. Community outreach and agency coordination have been very important components of the Caltrans project development process, providing a way to gather feedback and input on project elements. As you can see, Caltrans has been actively engaging the community and stakeholders since 2014. If you have not had a chance to visit the redesigned website, I highly encourage you to do so. The website provides a short summary from each of these community meetings. The website address will be listed at the end of this presentation, or it's easy to find by searching for Gleason Beach Project on any web browser. Your input is important to Caltrans and has been reflected in project design elements. Following this community meeting, the project will be on the agenda for the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors meetings next Tuesday, October 20th, and is scheduled to be heard at the November Coastal Commission hearing. This visual simulation represents the restoration of Scotty Creek within the project area after culvert removal. Some of the main features are outlined on this slide and include replanting locally appropriate native vegetation and restricting cattle grazing from Scotty Creek within the project area. As described in previous slides, members of the project development team have conducted numerous field visits, including biological and cultural surveys, visual impact assessments, geotechnical evaluations, engineering studies, and drone flights to understand the project constraints and to design the best possible project. 
In these next few slides, I'm going to share an overview of the project constraints that have led Caltrans to design the project that you see today. As previously shared, coastal erosion has necessitated this project, but the varied topography and natural resources were key factors in the specific elements of project design. The topography of the area is elevated in the south approaching the project limits, dips down moving north to Scotty Creek in the associated flood plain and wetlands, and then climbs up the coastal bluff to the north. This specific topography lended to the appropriateness of an elevated structure to avoid unnecessary impacts to these sensitive resources shown on this slide. Coastal terrace prairie habitat occurs throughout much of the project vicinity and could not be completely avoided. The habitat within the project vicinity is home to several sensitive species, including myrtle silver spot butterfly, California red-legged frog, as well as numerous more common wildlife species. Scotty Creek has historically supported coho salmon and steelhead. The existing view shed was also considered in the planning and design of the proposed highway realignment. Existing views to the west are of the natural coastline with some residential structures between the highway and the ocean. Views to the east are of rural pastures and grasslands with clusters of trees, scattered ranch buildings, and residences. The proposed bridge will alter the view to the east from the beach as well as the view from residences east of the bridge looking towards the beach. As the bridge is located east of the beach, views to the ocean from the beach remain unchanged, while the pedestrian path across the bridge adds new vantage points to view the ocean. Back in 2017, Caltrans shared several design renderings with the community to seek input and the favorite is the one that you see in the slide today specifically reflected in the architectural detailing of the proposed bridge to be compatible with existing rural coastal bridges in other parts of the state. Visual contrast with the surroundings have continued to be reduced through modifications of the project design by coloring the concrete to harmonize with the muted earthy tones of the coastal bluff and beach, by proposing see-through bridge railings, and by painting the bridge railings to blend with the coastal colors. A quick shout out to our landscape architects working on the project. If you haven't visited the project website recently, we've updated it to include an interactive simulation that you can use to explore the bridge in more detail from several viewpoints. The proposed bridge will have traffic railings on either side of the travel lanes and a pedestrian railing west of the traffic railing, all of which have been designed to meet current safety standards. The pedestrian railing color is in the process of being selected and we would love to hear your input. The railing colors will be selected from four colors that blend with Coastal View Shed. Galvanized metal, black, green, and dark green. The next four slides show the color options in larger format. There are two ways for you to provide your input. Participate in the poll tonight or visit the project website to review the visual simulations of these colors in more detail and let us know what you prefer in the next two weeks. The input provided will be shared with the California Coastal Commission in November. Galvanized metal. Black. Green. And dark green. We'd love to hear your opinion. In the next few slides, we'll focus on some of the main engineering constraints our team of engineers have been working to address through the design of this project, including creek hydrology and floodplain, coastal topography, and ranch access. The portion of the project that crosses Scotty Creek is prone to winter flooding and inundation from wave action during storms. This slide shows the potential for the 1% flood. Let me explain. A 1% flood has a 1% chance of happening every year. Due to this flooding potential, all design alternatives considered for this project include a bridge spanning the 1% floodplain. There is no long-term solution that doesn't include a bridge at this location. This slide shows the same information as the previous slide, but from the perspective of a driver on existing Highway 1 facing north. Current conditions and at 2100. 
As you can see, a 1% flood creates a lot of issues for the current location of Highway 1. The proposed realigned Highway 1 has been designed so as to not be overtopped by a 1% flood and to allow for truck access to the current agricultural land to the east. The proposed bridge would be elevated to accommodate truck access with two feet of clearance between the bottom of the bridge and the top of a truck. Additionally, the bridge would not be at risk of being overtopped by flooding through the projected lifespan. Another view of the floodplain, this time looking west towards the ocean, illustrating the distance that an elevated structure needs to span to avoid impacts to Scotty Creek, the associated floodplain, wetlands, and other sensitive resources underneath. In addition to the bridge and highway realignment, the project also provides several other benefits including habitat enhancement and public access improvements that will be in place for perpetuity. The existing culvert under Highway 1 limits the tidal flow and presents a partial fish passage barrier to salmonoids. Removing the culvert will not only remove the fish passage barrier, but will allow Scotty Creek to function more naturally, including surges from the ocean entering the mouth of the creek and freshwater draining to the ocean from the hills to the east. This visual simulation represents the restoration of Scotty Creek within the project area after culvert removal. Some of the main features are outlined on this slide and include replanting locally appropriate native vegetation and restricting cattle grazing from Scotty Creek within the project area. This is a component of the project where we've worked closely with our partner agencies to provide enhanced public access opportunities consistent with the Coastal Act and Local Coastal Plan. We know that this is an area where many people come to enjoy access to the ocean and we are pleased to include public access improvements within the scope of the project as well as committing to participating in ongoing coordination for future development of public access features. This visual simulation represents some of the features that will be developed in coordination with Sonoma County with construction targeted in 2024 or later. Caltrans also recognizes the importance of providing safe multimodal access on the state highway system, including bicycle and pedestrian access. This project has been designed to provide this access on the proposed bridge per Caltrans policy. Shoulders and sidewalk widths have been sized to meet safety criteria and accessibility for everyone. This will also enhance the future connection of the California Coastal Trail when the initial segment of the proposed trail on existing Highway 1 is no longer viable. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of Caltrans to thank you for participating in our first ever virtual community meeting for the Gleason Beach Roadway Realignment Project. We will now open the meeting up for your questions. I'd like to introduce you to key members of the Caltrans Project Development Team here to answer any questions you may have. Lillian Accorda, Jonathan Lee, Wesley Bexton, Caitlin De La Torre, and Adam Mankey. Thank you again. All right, thank you for that presentation, Arnica. And uh, we'll now put up a screen uh, slide to show the project development team. And we'll be just about ready to uh, take questions. Um, we got a few questions while the presentation was ongoing, so please, by all means, uh, continue to use that, and then we can, um, we want to take questions in the order that they're received, so if we know that uh, you're ready with a question, you can let us know in the chat. Uh, we'll be able to, uh, to keep um, the Q&A going. Okay, so the first question that we got here was from Keith. We have a lot of, uh, of folks in the uh, meeting here. Keith, if you'd like to uh, ask your question or um, I can read it. Uh, you can go ahead and read it. Great. A question from Keith. Where will public parking be located and how many parking spots will exist south of the creek versus north of the creek? A great question. Arnica, I think uh, you'd like to uh, continue to 
um, continue to speak, to provide an answer to that. Hey, thanks so much, Erica. Um, we have developed a conceptual public access plan uh, at this time in coordination with our um, coastal development permit application. And within that proposal, we have three parking spaces proposed south of Scotty Creek um, near the newly acquired uh, public access to the, um, the beach uh, south of Scotty Creek. And then um, approximately 16 informal parking spaces along an access road that we will be developing um, that extends from the realigned Highway 1 to the existing Highway 1, um, which will also provide access to the residents and parcels um, west of existing Highway 1. Um, those parking spaces um, will be further refined in coordination with Sonoma County um, through the um, establishment of a public access task force that is also a part of our coastal development permit and ongoing coordination efforts with Sonoma County and um, the California Coastal Commission staff. Okay, our next question comes from Ann. Ann, if you'd like to unmute yourself and you can uh, ask your question. Um, hi, um, I, I was just wanting clarification on if the bike lanes, or are, are the lanes uh, going to have a dedicated bike lane or is it just a shared lane for the bikes and cars? Great, I'd uh, like to turn that question uh, over to our design team. Uh, Jonathan, would you like to answer Ann's question? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Jonathan Lee, uh, Design North, uh, with the, uh, um, I'm the design senior for the project. For the, on the bridge, um, there will be uh, shoulders six to eight feet wide, which will be used by bikes. And there's a separate separated sidewalk so there's no there's no separate bike ped um, facility but the bikes will be able to use the shoulder okay does that answer your question Ann? Uh, yes thanks great and uh, Rodolfo hi good to see you I see your question here yes uh on, this is Ginny uh, Rodolfo's wife, but my question, hi, hi, what is the proposed lifespan of the bridge? Great question. I'll turn that over to the uh, uh, bridge engineers. Uh, Adam Menke, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, answer this question? Uh, hello, I'm Adam Menke. I'm the structural design PE for the project, which is project engineer. Um, so we design bridges for a hundred year lifespan. Um, so that's what it's designed for. As you see in San Francisco or Oakland or anywhere else, bridges last much longer with uh, maintenance and retrofitting. Uh, so we anticipate this bridge being there for a long time. Okay, and I suppose that this bridge, the engineering includes engineering for earthquakes? Uh, yes, yep. It's, uh, it was designed seismically um, for every possible earthquake in the area from the um, seismic fault lines in the, in the vicinity. So we get a report from our um, geotechs that give us all that information and then we run analysis. Um, I personally ran the seismic analysis for the bridge. Uh, so we look at a number of different modes and different things that would affect that bridge. Um, so that bridge will not collapse. It's designed to not collapse. Okay, thank you very much and nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. And Avril, I'm trying to find you on our screen here. Uh, to ask your question. We have 72 people that have joined uh, our meeting. That is a new record for uh, the Gleason Beach community meetings. There you are. Hi, Avril. And you uh, should, should be unmuted. Uh, Avril, you might need to unmute yourself. Still muted. Do you see the little button there? Trying to mute. There you are, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, I'm Michael Keyes, and I was wondering what's gonna happen with the new parcel, the parcel of land between the existing highway and the realignment. Uh, currently there's a wastewater uh, area in there, it's being moved once here, and I would like to know, will there be any native vegetation put in there? And also there's two drains that are associated with this. Uh, both of these uh, drain areas and culverts are failing. 
I was wondering when they get in there, are they going to clean up that and provide some type of connectivity and better uh, hydrology? A great question. Why, why don't we talk about the uh, drains first and then we can talk about um, what plans there are uh, for any uh, native vegetation. See that in your question here. Um, Jonathan, would you like to talk about the, uh, the drain repairs? Uh, the, for, uh, are we, I, I need to clarify, do you mean f for the leach field or the drain for the project in general? I'm, I'm not. The, uh, th there's two drains uh, north of the, of the wetlands in the bridge. One is uh, milepost 1552, and that hasn't been repaired in like 60, 70 years. And it's failing its road away in, in causing bluff erosion. And there's another one by the Vista Point that is also being, mm -hmm. uh, they, just, they just put a large timber there, like a pole to keep it from eroding the parking lot. Yes, okay. Yeah, there are, there are three drown drains north of Scotty Creek. And two of them, were, they are being replaced. They're, they're gonna be brand new down drains. And one, we're gonna maintain, the one closer to Scotty Creek is being maintained as we talked to the owner and basically we reached a, a compromise and we're just gonna maintain the existing down drain system in, in that one. So two of the three down drains will be repaired. Does that um, answer the question? That's the drain question. The question is how about the management of the, the area between the, the highway and the, the, the new highway? Who's going to manage it? What's going to happen there? A great, great question. Uh, Arnica, would you like to speak to the area between um, the existing State Route 1 and the uh, new roadway and uh, what's going to happen to that area? Is there going to be any native vegetation? Is that a possibility? How is this going to be managed? What are the plans for the area between the existing and the new alignment? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thanks, Erica. Um, Right now, we um, have purchased um, the existing alignment of Highway 1 and right of way for the proposed realignment of Highway 1. And the area um, in between is still in private ownership, including the leached field that you mentioned in your question. Um, within the public access plan and um, the public access task force that I mentioned earlier um, in coordination with Sonoma County and Coastal Commission staff, we will be working um, post construction once traffic has been moved to the realign Highway 1 um, on the redevelopment of segments of existing Highway 1 to utilize that area um, for development of an initial alignment of the California Coastal Trail. Um, some sections of it obviously will still have vehicle access on it, um, but there are some segments of the alignment of existing Highway 1 where we will be able to remove the pavement and um, proceed with recontouring and um, native planting as appropriate. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you for those questions, Avril. Uh, next question is from Eris. Eris, I'm trying to find you here. If you'd uh, like to unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, next question after Eris, we have a question from Sia, and uh, then uh, back to Keith and Chris in that order. So if you all uh, can be on the lookout for your names. Uh, uh, Eris. Okay, I was just wanting a little more detail on the the shoulder. You depict a you know a bicycle in the in the thing, but just refer to it as a shoulder. So is it going to be striped and signed as an official you know class two bike lane, or is it just you know a, a shoulder a shoulder a shoulder? I also noticed that the sidewalk uh, is only on one side, and is the sidewalk only on the bridge and not on the rest of the road? Can you clarify that would be great. Great, let's turn that over to, uh, to design to start out with a, a response. And then um, if anyone else from the project team wants to speak a little bit more about some of the you know, public uh, improvements related to you know, multimodal access. Um, but what can we say about the, uh, the striping of the bike lane? Is that gonna be an official bike lane? 
Yeah, this is uh, Jonathan. Yeah, right now it's it's going to be striped as a shoulder only. Um, the 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 and the side box is just for an hour on the bridge only. As I think Erica mentioned, there's going to be a, a future task force um, with Sonoma County dealing with public access and how whether to extend the sidewalks off of the bridge or whether to um, extend the bike lanes because right now the bike lanes basically will end at the end of this project. There's no co connectivity. So, so all these um, other issues will be will be discussed later as part of, as part of the the, sec the next phase of this project. Okay, does that answer your question, Eris? Great. All right, Sia, if you'd like to unmute yourself. We have a question here from you about uh, uh, armoring of the um, is this of the, the roadway? Uh, how much armoring would be necessary to create the public access parking at the south end of the realignment? And how much armoring will be necessary at the northern end of the realignment? So see, uh, you should be able to unmute yourself. Well, you asked my question for me, so thank you. Um, I'm, I, I just wonder that because there have been various images that have been presented to the public at the different meetings. And when you currently now try to access Scotty Creek from the existing highway alignment, um, there's a lot of erosion, it's very steep. And so I'm, I'm trying to understand how you could create a parking area there uh, and create access there. Uh, there's been previous images and previous reports that talk about having to actually put a seawall in in order to be able to do that. And so I did not see that in the presentation that you showed tonight in the image. Um, also at the Northern end too, uh, I've seen in various reports that you're going to have additional armoring. So just sort of wondering how that fits into the overall plan of trying to actually remove armoring rather than add it. So if someone could address that as far as uh, what's currently in the, in the design. So thank you, I'll go offline now. Great. I think if we can start uh, our discussion from the south end of the of the project site and what's happening there around uh, Scotty Creek, uh, Caitlin, our uh, project biologist, uh, would you like to describe, answer uh, Sia's question as it relates to, uh, you know, what's being done at that south end and, and will there need to be as much um, armoring or, or how is that being accommodated? Yeah, hi. So we will i i can't speak as much to the number of parking spaces that'll be created but we once the culvert and caitlin we've lost your sound hello caitlin can you hear us caitlin okay i don't think caitlin can hear us Sounds like a really good uh, response. Um, if, if we could help Caitlin out. Hi, Caitlin, are you back? Uh, Caitlin, we, we can't hear you at all. Um, Sia, I, I think this is a really great question for uh, Caitlin to answer. Um, let's are you hearing me? Oh, now we are. You're back. Hey, Caitlin. We, we didn't hear absolutely anything you said, so if you'd like to start over. Or we can come back to you also if you're having that connection, audio issues. Oh, you can hear me now? Is that what I'm seeing? Yes. <laughs> I can't hear anyone else, so I don't know if I'm being heard or not. We can hear you. We can give Caitlin a thumbs up. Okay, we've lost Caitlin again. Uh, Sia, we will come back to this question. I think this is a, a really great question. And hey, Erica, I think that we can, um, that the rest of the team can help answer Sia's question. Um, right now, there is, um, like you said, there's um, some pretty steep erosion between existing Highway 1 and um, the beach at Scotty Creek. Um, once we remove the culverts at Scotty Creek, um, and open that up, we'll recontour 
the the natural shoreline or um, banks of the creek on either side. On the southern side, um, we're going to add some RSB, and Jonathan can speak in more detail to that. Um, and um, you know, through coordination with Sonoma County, we have purchased um, rights, public rights to the beach south of Scotty Creek. Um, and so part of that public access task force that I keep coming back to is um, developing um, accessible access to that beach in coordination with Sonoma County. On the northern um, bank of Scotty Creek, the design does not call for RSB or any armoring at this time. Um, Jonathan, if you want to add anything. Uh, yeah, I'll just, um, for the, the, the technical details is um, basically we opened up, we're, we're going to remove Scotty Creek and we're going to try and open up the, as much of the channel as we can. And basically that leaves a, a sort of a stub of the existing road that we have to protect. Oops, is my video on? Yes, okay. And so basically we have about, I think it's 110 feet of rock slope protection to protect protect the existing stub and, and it'll wrap around and sort of protect both sides of that stub. So that's the amount of rock slope protection for Scotty Creek. Okay, uh, next question is uh, another question from Keith. Yeah, you had mentioned uh, earlier a public access task force that's going to try and deal with uh, these issues of parking and access and impact on uh, residents and all that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm just curious uh, how one provides input to that or whether there's an opportunity to participate as a part of that task force. Great question. Arnica, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, um, thanks, Keith. The, at this time, um, the Public Access Task Force is, um, you know, through our coastal development permit conditions, is the agencies involved in providing access. So Sonoma County, Caltrans, State Parks, California Coastal Commission staff. Um, but as agencies and um, you know, it, community, we're very interested in the compute, um, excuse me, the community input. And while I don't know uh, the ways to, the, the specific ways of community involvement in that process, that I know that it is important to staff from all of our agencies to continue engaging the community as these follow up components of the project are developed. Um, and so through, all of our agency websites um, and I would imagine through our email list serve as possible we will keep you guys informed as to how to provide input and feedback to that plan as it gets developed. Thank you. Okay our next question comes from Chris and uh, looks like uh, Chris says his connectivity is limited so I'll uh, ask this question unless your connection is better Chris and you'd like to jump in. Uh, this has to do with the bridge railing, uh, those images that were shown in the presentation. Uh, the question is, are the railing finish options all non-reflective? And if we could turn this question to our landscape architect, uh, Wesley, would you like to speak to the uh, railing finishes? Sure. Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for your question. So the, the final finishes haven't been selected yet. Uh, I encourage everybody who's on this meeting to uh, give us your comments on uh, what, what your opinions are for the, the railing, and we can take that uh, into consideration. Uh, we have talked about different levels of, of matte versus gloss finish. Uh, the, the glossy finishes are more durable, and so that is one thing that we need to consider as we select the, the final finish options. Okay. And, um, and if that didn't answer your question, Chris, at the end of this um, uh, presentation, uh, we'll put up the contact information again, um, as well as the website information. So by all means, you know, please follow up if there is additional information that you want to, to know. All right, uh, Nancy, 
a uh, question here. Great, great to see your questions. We also received uh, some of your questions uh, via email. So glad that you could join us at tonight's meeting. Sure, thank you. I just, uh, one question that I thought would be important to know is where the staging will take place for all the equipment and machinery and materials that will be needed over the three years. Great question. Uh, yes, if, if everybody could hear that, um, you know, where will the staging take place uh, for equipment and machinery and materials that are needed for construction? I'd like to turn this over to, uh, to design to talk about those needs and, and how that's going to be accommodated on the project site. Uh, yes, all the staging will be within the project footprint. Um, we we are we're putting, you know, environmentally sensitive area fences to restrict the contractor to make sure he stays within the footprint. Um, they they could use the access road footprint uh, stage while they're building the road. So that's that's the intent. Okay. Uh, next question here. I see uh, Douglas has his hand raised. Hi, Douglas. We also received uh, your questions um, in advance of the meeting. Uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself and, and ask your question. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. We're, we're getting a little bit of feedback. I don't know if you have um, different devices that are on at the same time. If you mute one. Hi, Douglas. If you mute one device, if maybe you're calling in and you're also on your computer, if you mute one of those, that should uh, improve the sound quality. Okay, we'll give Douglas a, a moment to uh, figure out his audio. And Doug, Douglas, when you're ready, um, please chime in. Um, our next question here, just taking them in the order they've been received, and please, you know, you can raise your hand as uh, Douglas did or, or um, indicate in the chat here that you'd like to speak. Uh, next question here is uh, uh, back to Rodolfo. Hello, Rodolfo. And if you can uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, hi. Hello. Hi. Um, I, yes, I noticed yes. that in the... In, in the presentation, there, were the, there was the bridge path, and then there was one slide that showed a path with people on bicycles um, as a public access path, expanding public access. Does that public access path, like how long is that public access path, and does it connect to uh, the Cordum Trail at Wright Beach? Okay. A, a great question. Uh, wanting to know about, you know, how long that path is. Does it connect to this Portum Trail at Wright Beach? Uh, Arnica, do you want to speak to uh, to the public access improvements of this trail? I know there's a, a lot of components that are part of this that are still ongoing. Sure. Um, I'm going to go back to that public access task force um, right now. The proposal is um, to use um, existing Highway 1 as an off Highway 1 alignment of the California Coastal Trail for the initial um, uh, location for that segment. Um, obviously, that is within the project limits. Um, and through that public access task force, we will be looking at connectivity um, in coordination with Sonoma County Regional Parks and State Parks, as well as Coastal Commission, about connectivity options um, north and south of the project limits. And obviously we understand that um, one of the reasons we're realigning existing Highway 1 is due to um, the threat of uh, coastal erosion or the ongoing coastal erosion out there. And so that is the first alignment with um, inland migration uh, to be planned and accommodated for as the existing alignment of Highway 1 is no longer viable for even pedestrian access. Does that answer your question? Uh, partially, I guess it's a, it, the answer is TBD by these in the, in the future that <clears throat> this will be determined. And how long is that stretch of road from there to say Wright Beach? Do you know? 
You know, I, I am not aware of where Wright Beach is per se. I'm okay. sorry. It's just north of the, the area that's being, where this bridge is going in. Sure. The, I know that the alignment of Highway 1, the realigned Highway 1 north of Scotty Creek is approximately three quarters of a mile. Okay. Um, right. And so that'll take you from Scotty Creek to the Vista Point owned by State Parks that's um, at the northern um, terminus of the project limits. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we, we, we've got uh, more questions here. And uh, we did get a question asking if we're going to also be speaking to the questions that were pre-submitted. Uh, yes, absolutely. We're going to get to those. Um, I think we're working through the questions that are, that are here in person, um, but we also know that not everybody could be here tonight, and so we will get to those questions. Uh, conversely, some of the questions that were provided in advance, um, I know some of those folks are here in attendance and are asking their questions as well. So um, uh, by all means, keep the questions coming and we will keep uh, working through them. Uh, next in the list here is uh, my Zoom. Um, not sure who that is, but the question reads, uh, we are owners of a home on Gleason Beach. Why are we not providing armoring for the north side of Scotty Creek? And uh, Arnica or, or Stefan, is this uh, something that you'd like to, um, uh, could address? Um, I certainly am willing to take a stab at it. Um, when we were doing our hydrology studies or our hydraulic studies, um, it was determined that the armoring wasn't necessary to protect the north side of Scotty Creek. Um, Jonathan, I think, may be able to help me um, give more detail. My assumption is it has to do with wave action um, and you know where we see that the, the way the waves hit Scotty Creek, that it wasn't deemed necessary. Uh, yeah, it was, um, it was kind of, yeah, based on an analysis of the hydraulic study, it was determined that the, the rock slope protection would not, would not be of any benefit. So it, it was needed on the south side, but the north side, it was determined it was not needed. Because they're concerned. Okay. Hi. Uh, this, th I'm sorry, this is Cheryl. That was my question that I put in that you had just answered. I have one more uh, part to what you had just said. Um, I, I know you guys are saying that that area doesn't need any extra bluff protection, but yet we're being told by the Coastal Commission that we have to dig up our septic tank and move it across the street to the area that you're talking about because they are concerned about erosion just north of Scotty Creek. So we're hearing different things. Okay, well, um, Cheryl, I would, I think that we probably need to follow up with you to provide more specific answers, at okay. least on what the studies um, in our environmental process have, have shown us. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't, be more specific tonight. Okay, thank you. And Cheryl, and for everybody who's on here tonight, um, if you'd like to provide your email list, uh, you know, we maintain a really robust email list um, of individuals, you know, really vested stakeholders who, you know, care about this project. So by all means, include your email here. Or as I mentioned at the end of the presentation, we'll be including contact information for you to be able to get in touch with Caltrans. So, so please, by all means, this is just, you know, in, an introductory um, presentation, if you will. Um, you know, we've had several of them, but we understand that some of these issues are very complex and, and need a little bit of more back and forth. So Cheryl, you also had a second uh, part to your question here about uh, parking, if you want to cover that as well. Yeah, I'm going to let Hobart ask that one. Yes, uh, uh, Cheryl and I own that property together. Uh, we're... Um, the second house up from Scotty Creek to the north. And I uh, uh, just want to try to uh, get a handle on the parking situation. Um, is it going to be a parking lot or is there going to be just parallel parking 
on the what would be the old Highway One? A great question, and in Arnica, you're you're doing a great job. I think if uh, if you'd like to take a, a stab at this, I think there's you know two parts of this, right? Where is parking going to be uh, provided, and then will there still be parking maintained along the existing uh, Highway One or somewhere on the bridge? Sure. Thanks, Erica, and thanks, Hobart. Um, right now, our conceptual plan is to provide informal parking. Um, to replace the parking that's um, lost by the removal of the culverts um, at Scotty Creek on an access road that will extend from the aligned Highway 1 to the existing Highway 1. Um, and ag again, not to be a broken record, but that will be vetted and developed through that public access task force um, in coordination with Sonoma County State Parks and Coastal Commission staff. Hey, Arnica, I'm sorry, this is Stefan Galvez. I wanted to clarify that uh, the issue of the parking lot, there will not be a parking lot. Uh, that was uh, something that we considered early on in the project, uh, but it was deemed that it was in a feature that was gonna be supported and, uh, because of conflicts with uh, resources in the area. So what we'd like to do is take advantage of uh, the two access roads uh, north of Scotty Creek um, uh, to use them as informal parking. I believe we're uh, providing about 16 parking spaces. Uh, so just wanted to make sure I clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's about as clear an answer as I've ever gotten. So I appreciate it. All right, excellent. Uh, the next question comes from Rich. Rich, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Sure, thank you. Um, I actually, I, I wrote it on the, uh, the chat, but <clears throat> the question was just about the, when you showed earlier <clears throat> the uh, optional pedestrian bridge lower than the bridge itself. And I, I was just wondering um, if that would not uh, inhibit the, uh, during the 1% flood, in, inhibit the, the salmon uh, trying to get up there at that point. And it seems like that's obviously would be in, inundated in, in the flood in that area. A great question. I think the, the two parts of this, right, are, are you know, would that pedestrian bridge uh, be subject to uh, flooding in that 1% uh, flood scenario? And then the latter part of this question is, you know, could it also inhibit the salmon? Um, right. Stefan, if you'd like to uh, take a uh, cut it, uh, maybe talking about some of those public benefits that we've been talking about, and then we can uh, uh, talk more about the technical specifics. Sure, definitely. Uh, again, this is Stephen Galvez, Division Chief for Environmental Caltrans. Uh, so uh, we've been working very closely with our partners in Sonoma County and Coastal Commission. We do not, uh, if, uh, let me back it up. We will be removing the culvert, and we will be building uh, the bridge. Um, there is an opportunity here as part of our discussions to provide uh, together uh, with Sonoma County and Coastal Commission, there is a desire to have a connect, connecting uh, bridge uh, that's separate uh, from the roadway uh, bridge uh, to connect this, um, the dead end or the stump on the south side with the previous Highway 1 with the remaining uh, um, pre-existing Highway 1. So one of the concepts is to consider a bridge that may be able to be moved or uh, it may be of temporary nature. And those details are being uh, discussed uh, with our partners at Sonoma County and Coastal Commission. It would be a bridge that uh, may be or will be built by Sonoma County. So they have the lead status on designing a type of facility that uh, will be suitable for that location. Uh, yes, it will be lower. Uh, it could potentially be inundated. Uh, that's where um, the temporary nature or, or the nature, the ability of being moved uh, is a possibility. So that's still being explored. Uh, the initial concept is to have that pedestrian bridge, um, but we don't have all the details. Uh, did that answer your question, Rich? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, obviously it's still in process of being worked out. Uh, I, I was just also curious, if I may ask while I'm out here, about the, I know we can vote on the color of the, of the bridge, but um, 
I live up on, on in Serena del Mar and over directly overlooked the, the bridge. And uh, you know, my personal vote would be for the galvanized. I, I assume that's not really reflective, but it looked at, it looked like a flat uh, kind of galvaniz galvanization on on the railings, uh, which to me is far less visible and, and uh, less obtrusive than the darker colors would be as you're looking down on the bridge. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Wesley, yeah. would you like to uh, comment on that? Sure. Hi, hi, Rich. Yeah, so galvanization is kind of by its nature a relatively flat uh, type of treatment. It does change over time. So, you know, it, it's going to look more silver and a little bit more reflective when, uh, when it's first installed and it's going to kind of dull out. Sure. Uh, but I, I think, you know, I, I kind of share your opinion, especially looking out towards the ocean. Uh, it's going to blend with the horizon pretty well. Right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. We've got just a couple more questions here that we've received during the Zoom meeting. So by all means, if you'd like to ask a question, please, uh, you know, put it in the chat box or raise your hand. Um, after these couple of questions, we can segue to some of the questions that we've received earlier. And I see uh, Doug is back. Doug, has your um, audio, is it working now? I want to come back to Doug. Okay, let us know, Doug, if, if it does come back. Um, we have another question from Avril here. Hi, Avril. The, the question is, will cut and fill be balanced? Um, I'd like to turn that to the uh, engineers, design, and structures to talk more about that. And, and Avril, we'll get to this question. Uh, yes. Um, well, no. Um, there's at the southern end. There's a. There will be a lot of cut, and at the northern end, there's there's only a little bit of fill, so it will not be balanced, and so the excess dirt will will be uh, removed from the project site. Just a quick follow-up, uh, Jonathan. Will it be staged initially there, or where will it go? Well, the the way that it's staged right now is basically the first. There's going to be three main stages. Basically, the first stage, you 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 keep the existing Route One open, and basically the contractor will build everything to the east, and that includes the bridge. So, depending on how the contractor stages it, he'll he'll move it'll be up to the contractor how he wants to handle the earth and then the second stage is where we'll con conform at the north and south ends and then you can open up the the new realigned road open the bridge to traffic and then the final stage will be work on the existing route one which will include removing the culvert putting the rock slope protection and doing some some minor roadway work Does that answer your question, Avril? Okay. Um, next question here is from James. Actually, I think Avril was on mute. Oh, hi, Avril. And Avril, you are still on mute. Am I on? Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, so up to the contractor, when they were doing the piling, uh, they were staging right here on the highway. There was a lot of damage, there was failures. I'm just, I, I, I think the project area, which is large, I think the, if they're going to put fill there temporarily, I think it should be away from sensitive areas. That's just my opinion. Um. Yeah, well, yeah, from, from the plan standpoint, we are putting ESA fences to try and restrict the locations where the contractor can work. We're trying to force the contractor to stay within the project footprint. Now, if there, um, if there are known areas, we can even restrict him further, but we're, we're trying to keep him within the bridge footprint and the roadway footprint. I, uh, Avril, I, I think part of your question is uh, relates to the, the rehabilitation of the land too. We are doing uh, topsoil harvesting in the areas that we're touching uh, with excavation, and we're going to be 
piling it in, in low piles that keeps the topsoil alive and then respreading that as the top layer. Uh, so that should help with the reestablishment of native vegetation. Okay, and, and by all means, Avril, um, you know, if you have additional questions, please reach out to these folks. We'll have um, the general email where you can submit your questions and, and get further, uh, further information. Certainly, thank you. Uh, James, James, are you able to mute your, uh, unmute yourself? Uh, we have a question from you here about uh, the construction process. Okay, uh, James is still on mute. I'll, I'll read his question here. Um, regarding the construction process and the impacts on those of us in the immediate project footprint, waste management and preventing access and egress to and from our homes. So I, I think the question is about being uh, concerned about those things happening and, and wanting to know what Caltrans is going to do about uh, about that, uh, keeping things in the immediate project footprint, waste management, and preventing that access and egress to and from our homes. So Jonathan, I think this was kind of what you were uh, just talking about right now. Uh, anything you'd like to add uh, to address James James's question? Um, well, the only thing I'll add is that uh, for stage one, basically all, I mean, all, for all stages, all access to the properties will be maintained. Whereas stage one, basically the road will be as is now, two lanes open, there'll be isolated, you know, one-way traffic control for short segments of time. Uh, for stage one, all work will be done during the day, so there won't, won't be any noise disturbance. And then for stage two, it, it'll be a short, maybe one or two weeks to do the north and south conforms. And those will be probably one-way traffic control. We'll have a temporary signal actually, but it, it'll be short term. So we're trying to make the contractor finish those two conforms as quickly as possible. Then you can open up the, open up the traffic. Uh, great, uh, thank you, Jonathan. And um, uh, uh, Lillian, uh, the PM, is this something that you'd like to provide any uh, further information on? And and you know, are there contractual, you know, issues with how this can be done, and, and to make sure that you know the contractor adheres to all of the requirements and and conducts this in the in the best manner. Hi, uh, this is Lillian. Um, um, I think Jonathan answered it uh, properly, but the the beauty of the project is that it is uh, a realignment. So most of the work will be outside of the existing highway one. So the disruption to the public, the traffic and all of that will be very minimum during probably going in and out of the project site uh, only. Um, and, and yeah, so um, I don't know what else to, to add. Um, sorry, I, I, I wasn't ready. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, uh, one thing I'll, I'll add is regarding the waste management. I mean, every contract, uh, we have uh, the stormwater pollution prevention plan. That's part of the contract. Uh, the contractor has to prevent um, water, water pollution and any discharges, keep them within, within the project. Um, it's always a bid item. So the contractor has an incentive. He, he has to follow it or, or else he won't get paid. And our Caltrans uh, construction group, they, they monitor it along with the water boards to make sure the plan is um, followed and make, make sure they do it correctly. Great. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. And, and James, I, I see you're still on mute, but please let us know if, uh, you know, this answers your question. And by all means, um, you know, please do follow up with us. All right, in the interest of time, it looks like everybody who um, wanted to ask a question has asked one. We have a few questions here from, from a few folks who have, uh, who have already asked a question. So I'll, I'll go through these and then uh, that'll leave us some time to get to the, uh, the pre-submitted questions. Um, here's a question from Doug. Doug, I think you may still be having technical issues. Uh, so I'll read this. Has the Leachfield pipeline 
on the east side of Highway 1 been located and daylighted? I am the president of the Gleason Man Beach Wastewater Disposal Company. We own and operate the leach field. So um, leach field pipeline on the east side of Highway 1. Has it been located and daylighted? All right. Would uh, Design like to speak to this? Uh, from, well, we're not, yeah, from the project itself, we're not impacting any of the leach fields. The, the one near Route 1, and there's also one near uh, Calais del Sol. Uh, we're not impacting those leach fields. So I'm, I'm not aware of the issue about locating, locating the, um, the, the pipe on the east side. Uh, maybe if you could, uh, maybe as a follow-up, we can get more information on that and figure out uh, what needs to be done. Okay, great. And, and Doug, if you are able to uh, get your audio, um, this is a question that we'll follow up and we'll find uh, a way to contact you. Um, we did get your email earlier today, so we have your contact information and um, we'll follow up with you to make sure that your question has been addressed. Okay, a question here from Anne. Uh, can you clarify that the pedestrian walkway is only on the bridge? Along the rest of the highway, pedestrians will walk along the side of the highway. Great question. Thank you, Anne. Um, Jonathan, if you'd like to keep responding to this question or... Um, uh, yeah, uh, right now it, uh, the sidewalk is only on the bridge and as part of the task force, um, we, we're going to determine um, where the coastal trail is and how to handle pedestrians. Um, right now, there's a sh you get off the bridge, there's an um, unpaved shoulder area you can walk, but the formal sidewalk or coastal trail, that's still to be determined. Great. And uh, uh, Lillian, let me know if this is a question you'd also like to add to. Yeah, so the, the, the sidewalk that is proposed on the bridge will connect to the future trail that, uh, you know, Arnica had mentioned earlier that will still be under the, uh, will be developed later on as part of the task force. Um, and uh, right now, I think the plan uh, as a temporary um, um, sidewalk or pedestrian path will be from the bridge, you use the shoulder of the existing roadway, you go to the central access road, and then you can go to the, the trail and go uh, north or south on the existing highway. Um, and on the south, you can also go down to the existing or the proposed shoulder of the roadway, access the southern access road, and go down to the existing highway to access the Scotty Creek. Okay, great. Thank you for that response, Lillian. Uh, another question from Anne. Uh, my first house is on the south side of the project zone in Sereno del Mar. Do I understand that a fence will be constructed on the farm? which is my back view during the construction period. And uh, uh, Jonathan, do you wanna to speak to what's gonna happen there during uh, construction? Yeah, during construction, there will be a, a temporary fence, a, a temporary uh, ESA fence, and also a temporary chain link fence to, um, to, well, to confine the contractor within the work zone and also prevent um, cattle or uh, sensitive species from entering the work zone. So there will be a temporary fence sort of following the alignment of the road, but it, it'll just be temporary. Okay, great. Uh, we have one more question and then we'll uh, go to our pre-received questions. Uh, will the construction be year round, including the rainy season and winter? Uh, Jonathan, you want to answer that one as well? Uh, well, the, for every construction, there's always uh, a, a winter suspension if it's raining. So it depends on when the rains start. Um, in terms of work near Scotty Creek, there is a work window that they can't, they can't work near. I think it's, uh, is it, is it, I think it's 150 feet. 
but uh, don't quote me on that. It, from Scotty Creek, there is a work window and it's from, oh, I think it's from something like um, oh, May through October where they, the contractor cannot work in the creek. But uh, other than that, there's um, no other restrictions, except like I mentioned before, there's no night work allowed except at the north and southern confluence when they do that work. Okay. All, all right. Um, in the interest of time, uh, we're, we're coming up on the half an hour, but uh, you know, Caltrans has this meeting open um for a bit longer so we'll get into the pre-recorded uh pre-requested questions and um thank you all for uh continuing to uh, be a part of this meeting um we've received a number of questions and here are a few that we received a couple of days ago from uh dr roberta and dr phil ballard um i believe they're on the call tonight i think they might be having a little audio issues um, I'll read the questions. It looks like we may have already addressed them in uh, this discussion here. Uh, the first question is, what are your plans and locations for staging work with heavy equipment during construction of the road and bridge? So we've talked a, a bit about staging. Anything else to add to this, uh, to this question? I think we've talked about uh, trying, having that uh, be all within uh, the project footprint. Uh, the second question is, what are the future plans for development of the coastal trail and public access to Scotty Creek Beach? Uh, so I think we've also talked a little bit about the coastal trail, but this question also specifically asks about public access to Scotty Creek Beach. Um, Arnica, is that something that you'd like to speak to? I'm sure I can elaborate a little bit on that. Um, and so much as to say that um, through the Sonoma County um, Public Access Task Force, um, we'll be coordinating with them. Uh, we know and that Gleason Beach is an area of high importance for public access. Um, and so in through that process, we'll be developing um, public access amenities to Scotty Creek, um, um, excuse me, to the beach as well as across Scotty Creek. Great. And uh, we have another uh, question we received in advance, and this is from Douglas. And I think we, we may have also covered this one. I'll, I'll read it in its entirety. And, and uh, Doug, then let us know if, if we've addressed this. Um, it appears that a small bridge is going to replace the existing culvert for the creek that seasonally runs into the sand of Gleason Man Beach. Will this also allow two-way vehicle traffic? It would be a desirable feature for the existing homes in uh, in Douglas's point of view, so I think we've talked a, a bit about the, the the pedestrian bicycle bridge, but haven't uh, specifically addressed whether that will allow two-way vehicle traffic. Um, would like to address that, uh, either design or Arnica, if you'd like to um, address that. Eric, I could jump in really quickly. Great, thank um, you, Stephen. Again, it's is a. The bridge will be uh, designed by, in conjunction with Sonoma County and the Coastal Commission. Uh, in our conversations with our partners, it, it's not envisioned to be a vehicular bridge. It's gonna be more of a human scale, uh, bicycle pedestrian um, bridge. And uh, D Douglas, I see you here tonight. Does that address your question? Okay, and, and by all means, as, as we've been saying, please do follow up if you have additional questions, want some further information. Um, Nancy Otto also provided uh, some questions in advance. Uh, Nancy, we know you were on the, the call a little bit earlier today. Um, I think some of these we've addressed. Uh, I'll, I'll read the questions and then we can, uh, we can address them. Uh, so the first question has to do also with staging of the equipment and heavy machinery. So that definitely has been uh, been covered. Um, to the second question, you know, Nancy asks, uh, it says the design is still being worked on. How does that design process work? And uh, is it possible for the design to be a little more pleasant to look at since it will be my new view? 
something a little less angular, following the contours of the land, more like the current roadway? And does it have to be 30 feet high? And if so, why? So really good, uh, a couple of questions here um, in, this one, in this one question. Um, so I'd say to the first part of how does that design process work, uh, Jonathan or, or Adam, is that something you guys uh, can talk to, the, the project development team process and, and how all of that comes together to, to bring up, to create a project? Actually, this is Nancy. I, I feel like you've already answered this in your presentation, so I don't really need to do that. But thank you, Erica. Great. Okay, and, um, and and we could absolutely cover it if that's something uh, you know anyone else is is interested in hearing about. But but yes, we, we are going to make the presentation available on the website. So please do take a look at that. That you know is going to answer some of the questions that you may have, and um, and it may help you come up with additional questions. Uh, the the next question here is is with regards to traffic noise. And you know how is that going to be? Is it going to be you know greater than uh, than what's there now um, with the bridge? Um, and the other part of your question here, Nancy, is that you know people already go fast on the current road, and with a straightaway, won't they be tempted to go to pass and go faster? Um, so won't traffic you know amplify the noise? So uh, really great questions there as well. And do we have some information that we can provide here? I'll turn again to, uh, to design or, or structures to provide again a little bit more information of what goes into um, the development of a project and how to minimize um, that type of impact. Yeah, this is uh, Jonathan again. Um, in terms of noise, um, there are a couple of, um, there are a lot of factors that go into how noise is perceived, but two main factors are the speed of traffic and the volume of traffic. And for this project, um, we're not changing the capacity of the road, so the volume is the same. The speed, uh, there was an earlier speed survey done and the prevailing speed was uh, 44 miles per hour. For our new realignment, because of the, the curved alignment, our, our design speed is actually lower. It's actually 35 miles per hour one, as you get onto the bridge and through the bridge, it, the design speed is actually 35 miles per hour. Um, so, so we don't expect the, the prevailing speed to increase um, to affect the noise, but uh, the bridge surface is, is concrete. So there is, um, there is a chance that there's uh, more noise because of the, the surface. But um, I know Adam in his design, he's uh, incorporated um, some techniques to lessen the, the noise level as the cars go over the bridge. Um, I don't, if Adam wants to, to uh, All right, over to you, Adam. Follow up on that. Yeah, I can, I can speak a little bit to that. Uh, we knew this was gonna be a, 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 an issue. It is in a lot of areas. Um, in urban areas, we, <laughs> we automatically implement a quiet deck spec, which means the bridge deck gets ground and grooved longitudinally along the alignment, uh, which re it drastically reduces the noise. Uh, it's not a requirement in rural areas, but um, early on in this project, we knew this was going to be something that was going to uh, be important to the community. So we implemented this spec in this project uh, automatically. So we're going to implement the quiet deck spec so it dramatically lessens the sound from the bridge. Okay, I see a thumbs up from Rich. Excellent. All right, la last question from Nancy here. Um, and this has to do with some of the public access improvements that we've been talking about tonight. Um, I understand a park is also being considered. Uh, where are you in thinking that through? Will there be trash cans and bathrooms? Will this be a park where people can stay overnight? Will someone be monitoring fireworks uh, since this park would be even more close to grasslands than where fireworks are currently being shot off? So uh, great questions, Nancy. And uh, Arnica, if you'd like to uh, start off and talk about the public enhancements in the task force. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Erica. Thanks, Nancy. Um, as I said before, right now, um, and Janice, I can also answer um, your 
question as well I see in the chat that Caltrans has purchased um, the right of way of the existing alignment of Highway 1 as well as the alignment, the, the realignment, um, the necessary easements or not easements, but right of way for that realigned location of Highway 1. Um, within the existing alignment of Highway 1, once traffic has been redirected to the realigned Highway 1 um, with Sonoma County as the lead on that public access task force for the, com the, the sections of existing Highway 1 that are no longer necessary to provide vehicle access to parcels and houses along the beach, um, or excuse me, west of existing Highway 1, will be working with Sonoma County to modify or remove some of the pavement um, and return it to a more natural condition. Um, and, and that's the components of the, or you know, the conceptual idea of the park. Uh, ancillary things such as trash cans, um, benches, uh, the visual, the placards with information about, you know, local resources and flora and fauna and stuff like that um, will all be um, developed more through the Sonoma County Public Access Task Force. Great. So more information to come, Nancy. All right, we have one last question uh, that was received in advance of the meeting. Um, as I mentioned, we got a lot of questions, but a lot of you actually um, we're able to make it here tonight and we're able to ask your questions. Um, the last question that we received is from Richard Charter. Uh, Richard, I see that you're here at the meeting tonight. If you'd like to um, ask your question or I can uh, read from your email here. All right, I'll read uh, Richard's email and then Richard, if your uh, audio um, if you're able to hear us and want to jump in, uh, by all means. Uh, email from Richard, glad to see that you no longer refer to sea level rise as the primary reason for the oversized bridge, since clearly very precarious homes and a fragile highway right of way uh, were inadvisably built on an obviously already unstable cliffside long before there was even a subdivision map act or a formal county planning department here. Uh, the question therefore remains, why has Caltrans not taken a serious look at relocating the small neighborhood leach field, uh, moving that further inland to another nearby location so that Highway 1 could be relatively inexpensively realigned far enough inland to bypass the cliff erosion for many decades uh, without creating the artificial need for such a massive engineering project and the proposed freeway scale bridge, virtually obliterating the magnificent view shed in the process. Uh, thank you, uh, Richard. So a, a couple of points here. I mean, the first being um, with respect to the leach field and, you know, why is that something that Caltrans has not, uh, you know, looked at relocating? And even if that were uh, not there, you know, is it possible that that roadway could be realigned uh, where that's currently located? I think those are the, the first two uh, parts of that question. Uh, so, so to talk about the uh, the leach field and and um, why Caltrans is not taking a look at at relocating that and how that works into the uh, the project, uh, Stefan, is that something you'd like to address? Uh, yes, I I could um, address that issue. So, uh, the leach field served uh, the number of properties that were located on the bluff. Um, obviously, throughout the last uh, years, uh, many of those properties uh, have uh, been lost uh, to coastal erosion, uh, but there still remain, several uh, properties remain. So those uh, properties need to have uh, public services, including uh, that of sewer system and treatment. And so uh, the project does not propose to remove those properties and impact the leach field uh, because we need to guarantee that service uh, to those properties. And then, uh, in terms of where we're going to realign the highway, we want to make sure that we make a good expenditure of uh, taxpayer funds. So our modeling was based on the one foot uh, per year erosion. 
that uh, we were experiencing in the area and in coordination with Sonoma County as well as with the Coastal Commission, uh, we determined that the alignment that we have uh, uh, looked at and selected uh, will buy us uh, sufficient time at least um, towards the end of uh, 2100. Uh, so uh, that's the reason why that alignment was selected. And, and I think to the latter part of this question about the, you know, the, the magnificent view shed, and I think everybody acknowledges it's beautiful and we all wish we were having this meeting uh, back in Bodega Bay. Um, Wesley, would you like to speak a little bit about, you know, how Caltrans has tried to preserve as much of this view shed and, and really build something that can be as, as compatible as it can be? Sure. So I, you know, this was addressed in the presentation. Uh, earlier we are we've selected a color for the concrete that blends with the the bluffs and with the uh, sand at, at scotty creek beach and uh, you know, our, our hope is to try to marry that and harmonize it with the coast a little better i uh, there's some architectural detailing on the bridge that helps uh, tie it to some of the historic coastal bridges uh, up and down the coast but yeah i mean we, we all recognize that this is a very large bridge and uh you know we're we're doing what we can to, to help tie it uh, to the coastal community. Great. And Richard, please let us know if that addressed uh, your question. And by all means, um, this, this is a really important question. All right. Well, I think we've worked through all of the questions that have been uh, pre-received um, as well as received during this meeting. Um, so if there are any that we, you know, may have missed, I, I think we've covered them all, um, but they will be included on the website. Um, I'd like to now ask Sam. Sam, would you please put up the slide now that we're done with um, asking the questions um, to show the project team uh, so that everybody here who's still in attendance can see a, a little bit more clearly as to who was responding to which questions. Um, we'll put that slide up. And, and again, we'll let you know where you can uh, reach out, uh, where you can reach out for more information. Okay. Uh, this is the Caltrans project development team. All right. Um, we'll be putting this on the uh, website. That'll include the contact information. Uh, we've got the public information officers that have been part of this meeting. Um, Jeff Weiss, you may have seen his responses to some of your emails. Um, so please, you know, keep the questions coming. Uh, again, take a look at the information that's on the website. Um, as Wesley and Arnica mentioned, you'll be able to find the uh, bridge railings um, on the website and let us know uh, your preference for those. Uh, Landscape Architecture has also worked on a really great uh, visual flyover of the project site, um, and that will be up. So lots of uh, developments here on the website. Um, in, in closing, I'd like to ask the uh, project development team if there's anything else they'd like to uh, add. Stephen. Yes, Erica, I, thank you for that. Uh, uh, this is Stefan Galvez. I really want to thank all the members of the community that uh, attended the meeting. Uh, we have committed early on in the project uh, to continue uh, involve, involving you, informing you. Um, we had planned to do an earlier meeting this year. COVID got in the way, unfortunately. And so here we are trying to uh, continue to engage uh, with the community. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to also encourage you and, and remind you that we will be going to the California Coastal Commission meeting. Uh, which is on that uh, first week of November. So in about two, three weeks, and uh, there is a public uh, a process as part of, of that hearing. So I uh, wanted to make sure that everyone uh, was aware of the meeting and uh, you definitely open and are welcome to participate on, on that meeting. We'll be making the presentation in front of the Coastal Commission and definitely your input is welcome in all these processes. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that that was also uh, fresh on your radar, okay? Uh, but with that, thank you so much. Erica, you're on mute, just so you know. 
Thank you, everyone. Please uh, provide your email information. We already have a lot of your uh, emails. Great seeing everyone tonight. We'll put this on the uh, website and send out an email letting you know where you can find this information. Good night. Thank you.